I want voters to know that I'm an outsider. I've lived in Shasta County almost 40 of my 45 years, and I'm a doer, and I'm absolutely a common sense solutions kind of guy. I got to the point where I just sat around and realized that the Shasta County I grew up in and the one I was gonna be leaving to my kids and hopefully someday grandkids is not the one I grew up in. And after going to actually one Board of Supervisors meeting, I realized that the only way this place is gonna change is if people like myself and me specifically got involved and brought common sense and, and, a, and a fighting spirit for Shasta County back and where we prioritize Shasta County first. And I think the only way to do that is for me to run. I'm the best candidate because I'm an outsider and I have no political affiliations or allegiances to anybody. I'm a dad and I'm a father, I'm a business owner, and I'm, I'm, I'm the little guy. And I absolutely fight for the little guy because uh, we've been neglected and we've been unlistened to. And I can definitely keep everybody's best interests at the focus and at the center of what I do, regardless if they vote for me or not, because I want a better Shasta County for all of us. We have to strive towards eliminating homelessness and crime and decreasing it at the very, very least. We have to have this place be a lot safer. We have to be fiscally responsible. We have to streamline the services and the money we're spending across this county and make it where it functions optimally and it doesn't just waste our hard-earned money. And the third is I want to be able to create a one and a half to two and a quarter percent uh, pool of money for kids in Shasta County between the ages of like kindergarten and third grade where we give them money, not directly, but we give vendors money. So if they wanna take dance lessons, karate lessons, uh, gymnastics, martial arts of any kind, et cetera, because if we don't invest in our kids because of what's happened to them the last two years, they're likely, by a high percentage, statistically gonna be part of our criminal justice system when they turn 18. So we really have to double down and invest in kids right now more than ever. being extremely fiscally responsible. We have to cut back on uh, some of the programs and services that clearly aren't working. We have to do a deep dive and a forensic audit and make sure the money we're spending, we're seeing a return. And I'm not talking about an internal audit that our county does itself or a local agency. I mean bringing in completely fresh eyes from outside the area with having no ties, no contracts, no affiliations whatsoever with our county or any of its employees. When we know where we're spending our money, we're gonna have a lot better view and opportunity to see what's working, what do we invest in further, and what programs do we stop and cut. Cost of living and inflation. Uh, it, it, is, it is everybody's feeling it. Everybody's feeling the pinch of trying to stretch a dollar as far as they can. Now there are some, there are a very select elite that don't care about the price of gas, don't care about groceries because they're at a state or they're at a place financially that it doesn't impact them like it impacts everybody else. We have to make sure where we can make Shasta County more affordable and more able for the average citizen to live and thrive, we've got to take those opportunities. The steps I can take is listening to voters, listening to people that live here, and understanding where everybody's coming from, being a voice for all of us. As I've knocked on doors, hundreds and talked to thousands of voters, a lot of people feel unlistened to. And I wanna be that candidate. I wanna be that supervisor that listens to everybody. Vocationally, that's what I've done my entire life. As, as a coach and as an agent, I've been able to inspire and, and help drive people to their absolute best. I think this is no different. Uh, instead of having players, you're having other people that are sitting on boards or other government officials. We all have to come to the table and do what's best for everybody. Some decisions are gonna be really tough, but we can do it absolutely with respect for one another, but yet uh, have the integrity and backbone to hold the line and make sure what's right is right and we, 
we do that with a conviction that says this isn't just an office. This is a voice for all the people. And I know I can do that. The biggest misconception about me is I don't have any experience. I have plenty of experience. I've been married almost 25 years. I have three kids and I have custody of four. I run a global company. We've done events in all over the US, South America, and right before the shutdown, we did a 10-day event in Hong Kong. Experience to me is taking a breath of work across 45 years of my life, and I've been unwavering in doing what's best for everybody and making sure that people's voices are heard, but yet tough decisions can be made. And I have no, no allegiances to anybody when it comes to doing what is right. I faced a lot of challenges, and I think, uh, you know, losing a brother um, who had addiction problems and uh, had a criminal uh, background, uh, walking with my family through that, and then his uh, death at 33 is one example. But then also at the same time, uh, having two brother-in-laws who are in law enforcement, having served very briefly in the military, my life has been. Uh, one challenge after another, but I'm thankful for those challenges because they've actually grown me. They've showed me different sides, different people's opinions. And I think the most important thing is to know if, if and when you've failed, it's not really failing if, you're, if you've learned something from it and apply it to do better the next time.